What's up YouTube? Pat for this land Batten here and I wanted to talk to you about some good medicine that can come straight from your garden. What I'm talking about today is echinacea. Now echinacea can be found in almost any grocery or um, <clears throat> pharmacy store anywhere across the nation as an herbal supplement intended to boost your immune system. And under the current conditions, I know a lot of people are particularly worried about how that works and where that comes from, and especially whether or not it will be particularly effective against, say, I don't know, COVID-19. So let's talk a little bit about it. Over the last 150 years, there has been, well, closer to 200, there have been multiple studies to try and determine the effectiveness of the various echinacea species uh, across the globe. The two primary species that have shown to have significant effect and been easy to cultivate and reproduce for uh, the making of medicinal supplements are Echinacea purpurea, and you may be able to see behind me over there, uh, Echinacea augustifolia. Now across multiple double-blind studies as well as well, with, amongst humans, as well as multiple mice-based studies, they've been able to determine that the polysaccharides, monosaccharides, and even um, echinocides of echinacea are able to trigger hormonal and immunal responses within the body to kick up the production of T cell and B cells and natural killer cells within the body, which are what we use to fight off various infections. It's been tested in a number of scenarios applying to multiple sorts of diseases ranging from the common cold or rhino, the rhinovirus to HIV AIDS and even its ability to support the body in fighting off cancer. And a lot of the studies kind of show some contradictory uh, results. Part of that is because of the complication, the complications found in turning plants into medicine because any given plant will have different amounts of different kinds of chemicals during different times of the year across different parts of the plant. And that leads to us trying to figure out what do we harvest, when do we harvest it, and how do we reduce those plants into a medicinal form from something as simple as making a tea out of the plant to eating the plant directly? Do we turn it into a salve, a tincture? How do we make it a medicine for us? That's part of why the complicated results have shown up and across all the studies. Which part of the plant did they use? Which species of plant did they use? What time of the year was it harvested? All of these things make a difference in the creation of medicine from plants. But no matter which study you're referring to and which part of the study you're looking at, they have all, almost across the board, found some positive effect in boosting or stimulating the immune system to fighting off disease, with particular success in uh, rhinovirus or common cold in upper respiratory infections. And I know inside of your head you may be thinking, oh man, COVID-19, that's an upper respiratory infection. Will this help? Maybe. There's no particular study on the effectiveness of echinacea with regards to COVID. All we know is that it boosts the immune system. And we also know that echinacea itself has no particular negative effects on the body over long periods of, of use or even short periods of use. And it has, they've been able to find zero so far contraindications or uh, counterindications with other medications and the only possible risks it may pose to you on a health level is if you already have an autoimmune disorder or already have a seriously comp compromised immune system or a complicating health factor at which point you should not be making your own medicine you should be regularly visiting and contacting your doctor but for those of you that don't have these complicating health factors Let's talk about a couple of these two plants, the parts we want to harvest, how to tell the difference about uh, the difference between the two, and how we're going to break them down into uh, med medicine, a tincture in this case for use at home. Right here, we are looking at Echinacea purpurea. It can be defined. It's also called the purple cone flower, and for obvious reasons, you have these nice lush purple radials that don't tend to hang down too far compared to say the echinacea augustifolia and it looks like a cone that's one of the easy ways to tell this kind of orangish brownish purplish cone that sticks up out of the top one of the ways to also help distinguish this is the the purpurea or the purple cone flower looks more conish than the augustifolia and we'll see over here the augustifolia is more rounded and its radials droop more and 
down at the base of the stems, you see that the stems tend to break off more regularly into more blooms and buds that will come up later. When harvesting this plant and the others, we're going to be focusing primarily on the flowers and stems and leaves. All parts of this plant can be used for making the medicine, and in fact, the roots are typically regarded as the most potent aspect of this plant for medicine. However, in my garden here, since I only have a few plants, um, I'm not going to focus on digging them up and pulling out the roots because I want them to be here for more years to produce more medicine over time. That will reduce the potency of the tincture that is created. However, it will give me a longer lasting, more vibrant garden and a more continuous um, source of this particular medicine. Let's go check out Augustifolia. Here we are looking at Echinacea augustifolia, and as I mentioned before, you see that the radials have more of a pronounced droop. The color or tone of the purple is a little more subdued, and the actual center of the cone is less cone-like. It's got more of a rounded feature, and it's got more of a brownish orangish hue inside of the spiny um, center here. Strangely enough, Echinacea refers to the Latin echin or echidna, which it refers to hedgehogs. That name kind of makes sense when you get to it. Now, Augustifolia, folia meaning leaves, and Augusta referring to the longer, thinner nature of the leaves. So these leaves will tend to be a little longer and a little more spiny on the bottom. Both of them tend to be spiny on the bottom, but the Augustifolia is more pronounced in its spininess. And you see it gets taller and more slimmer than the purpurea and showing fewer uh, branches along the way um, in terms of breaking off to form new stems and new blooms and buds. So again, with this one, and, and, and typically when you're harvesting these plants, you wanna make sure to harvest from a more mature plant, something that is at least two years old. The first plant we looked at is about uh, six year, four years old, and this guy here is about two years old. That means we're, we're within that range of the plant's um, effectiveness in um, producing those chemicals that we want to stimulate the immune system. Now, both the Augustifolia and the Purpurea have shown to have different quantities of the kinds of uh, chemicals that we're looking for, and each show having different effects on the types of uh, white blood cells and stimulatory effects on the immune system. So by combining these two together into a singular tincture, we will therefore be able to increase its effectiveness even though we are not taking from the root system for reasons that I mentioned before. So let's go ahead and harvest some of these leaves and flowers, and then we'll head inside and show you how to make the tincture. Now, as I am selecting the blooms and leaves to pull, the first thing I'm looking at is to check myself. Do I find there are still blooms coming down? Are there? Excellent. I'll go ahead and take that guy and leave room for the next bloom. That gives me this. I will use the leaves, the stem, and the flower itself that I'll grind up and pulverize before soaking in the alcohol that we'll use. I'm also making sure to select more widely from across the plant to ensure that I'm not traumatizing any one particular section of the plant, allowing it to continue growing and thriving throughout the rest of the year. And if necessary, I'll be left with the ability to harvest more should I require that. Oops, I accidentally broke one, so I guess I'll take that guy. It's donezo anyway. So I'm just sort of being selective, pulling across the broad spectrum of the plant and allowing room for the plant to continue growing and thriving for the rest of this growing season. See down here I have two, even a couple more blooms that are starting to thrive down below. So I cut that one off and make a lot more room. And here, now I have more of these combined with what I took from the other plant to be able to mix in with the alcohol to create a tincture. Okay, so I'm in the kitchen here now. I have just rinsed off my, my flowers here. 
I have just washed off the knife that I'm going to be using and the jar I intend to use just came fresh out of the dishwasher and is sterilized. And the reason we want to focus on having sterility here is we're talking about a medicine intended for ingestion. And sure, they're going to be sitting inside of alcohol for six weeks at least, but it's one of those better safe than sorry's. Treat it like you're in a me medicine lab and sterility is your key. So I'm not going to go with a full pulverization grinding it into fine powder though if I did want to do that it wouldn't be a bad idea because as what we're shooting for is by breaking up the material we're increasing the surface area for the alcohol to interact with on the plant which can help speed up the process and get a more complete removal of the plant material of the of the chemicals we're after from the plant material so here I'm gonna kind of just go through like I'm like I'm dicing up some vegetables and re reduce them in general size to make them fit within the uh, the jar a little more easily and again like I said before increase that surface area that the plant that the alcohol is going to interact with so I got it all a little chopped up now I'm going to move it into the jar now since we are using fresh plant material and there's a difference between using the dried and the fresh plant material for whatever jar you're going to use and it looks like I'll need either a bigger one or moving into another jar if you were going to go with dried pulverized plant material you'd fill it up about halfway and part of it is because when the plant dries it reduces in size and it reduces in total mass and therefore you don't need quite as much physical stuff in there with the fresh plant material instead of filling it up halfway I'm gonna go about two-thirds of the way and then cover that with alcohol I recommend using the freshest plant possible because just like with fresh fruits and vegetables the faster it has come off the plant and then into your mouth the more of the the plant and its deliciousness you get the same here is true with uh, medicinal plants you can hear junior in the background getting down at it so I'll get a little more in here maybe I'm overfilling a little bit yeah whatever let's do it let's get it in there let's pack it down all right so maybe I'll overpack it a little bit but what are you gonna do all right next is your alcohol selection you're not really drinking it for drinking sake but you do also not want to have the worst alcohol available to you. Remember, you are going to be drinking it one way or the other in the end. So spend the least amount of money that you're comfortable with drinking. Right here, I have a delicious Jameson that was aged in oak barrels from one of Yakima's own local uh, breweries. So that delicious Bale Breaker IPA was put in there. And... We'll just enjoy a little bit of that right here now. Next, I want to go with the alcohol that I'm actually going to soak the plants in. There's a few options you can have. Ideally, you will be choosing a 40 to 50% alcohol or 80 to 100 proof. You could go for a delicious pinnacle whipped, uh, whipped cream vodka for your woo girl medicine. I don't know how that got in there. Or what I would recommend is a good old-fashioned standard vodka right here. Easy, pure grain alcohol ready to go in. Although it's not really a grain, is it? It's from a root. But what are you going to do? So I'll take it and I'll pour it in. And I remember I want to fill up the jar and just cover the material. And you can see it actually ends up taking quite a bit. And there I left a little bit uncovered but uh, I also overstuffed it a little farther than I intended to. If I felt particularly serious about it, I've also got a little bit of rum here. Why not? Topping it off. The alcohol is what we're after, less about the actual flavor of it. Now I'll cover it, and I'll go and I'll store it in a cool, dry place. Let it sit for about six weeks at least, up to maybe three months. And after that process has been completed, I will have fresh, ready-made echinacea tincture for less per ounce, maybe about a dollar an ounce, 
whereas you would find an eight to twelve dollar an ounce uh, medicine at the store. Thanks for watching. Hope that helped and hope that you find a deeper connection to the land through finding medicine in your own garden and out in the wilds. If you like this video, give it one of those little thummy deals. Remember to do a little subscribe deal and that whole bell thing so that it irritates you when I post new, new videos. Like, share, subscribe, and remember, whatever you do for this land, you do for everybody. Thanks for watching.